Okay, so in this tutorial we are going to do some really basic survey creation using the very powerful online survey creation tool Qualtrics. So the first thing you're going to need to do here is make sure you created your Qualtrics account. You need to go to sdsubusiness.qualtrics.com and this is the proper location for you to create your initial account. You can't go directly to Qualtrics.com. So once you create your account here, it's a piece of cake. Uh, you don't need to use your SDSU email address. Anything will work. Later in class, you'll learn why this is important that you create your account through here. So once we've created this system, uh, you actually can go to Qualtrics.com in the future to log in as normal. So I'm going to log in with my account. And I'm going to click the Create Survey button. Usually when you log into Qualtrics, you see a page that looks something like this. These are some of the surveys I have going on right now. You probably will have a blank space. You haven't had to create a survey yet. So I'm going to create my first survey. And it gives me some options. Uh, we're going to start, and this is how you'll normally build your survey. You'll use the Quick Survey Builder. Go ahead and give your uh, practice survey a name. I'm going to call mine Delete This Soon to start remind myself to clean this up and I will drop it in my marketing research class folder um, at later times you can go in and create folders to organize all your surveys I have more than a hundred surveys going right now so usually developing a good folder system is very useful so go ahead and create our survey here we see uh, there's some settings up here for our survey along the top we see the name of the survey and we see this thing called the default question block. This is where we'll be building up our questions. So we're going to create a few real simple uh, survey questions just to illustrate the basics of Qualtrics. Let's click this uh, create a new item right here. And by default, Qualtrics tries to create the most generic of survey question items you might do, where you can type in a question and select some options. We don't want to do that for our first one. For our first one here, we're going to be using some of these settings on the right hand side, these light blue colors here. And for this question, we want to turn this from a question actually into just a generic place where you can put text, like an intro page. So we will click on this green button here. Here's all the different options for the different array of uh, question types we can use. I'm going to go just with the basic descriptive text right here and here I could write up a wonderful introduction I can click on this where it says Q1 here it's the default that it sets I'm going to rename this call it intro and if I wanted to make this fancy I could always click the rich content editor and here we get sort of a word style looking interface where we can bold things, increase their size, and so on. And there's some additional advanced features that we won't talk about right now. So click out. Here we have our introduction. Now let's create a new item. And this time we're actually going to create a real question. I can click create a new item here. And I'm going to create a Likert style question. And uh, let's see, call it how much do you agree with the following statement I love marketing research and now remember a Likert scale question has five different points and here we only see three so first I'm going to click over here and create it for uh, two additional choices so now I have five choices and I'll give my uh, option a name here let's see we all we should know that a Likert scale will have strongly disagree and then we could keep going on however uh, a Likert scale is a standard type of scale that we use frequently in marketing research so what we're going to do here is click this automatic choices option and what the automatic choices does is Qualtrics is doing its best job to sort of guess what type of scale you're going to use and in this case once we saw strongly disagree typed in it guessed that you wanted a Likert scale and it guessed correctly be careful, Qualtrics automatic choices doesn't always work. It has some hiccups, but occasionally it can save you a little bit of time. 
And I'm gonna call this set a Q1. I will name this uh, like MK research. Maybe a little long. That's okay. All right, so we've created our first Laker scale question. Uh, good for us. Now let's go ahead and create a new item. And in this one, we will uh, illustrate another type of questionnaire format. Let's say which of the following marketing courses have you taken in the past? <clears throat> in this case, I will type in internet marketing. I'll type in consumer behavior. Behavior. I will also type in direct marketing and I could go on and on and on but I won't. Now <clears throat> here we see little radio buttons. This indicates only one option can be selected but of course in many instances we want to ask questions where people might want to select multiple options. So what we're going to do here, we are going to click this multiple answer option. And now that we see this multiple answer option selected, it's obviously we have check boxes and people can select more than one option. All right. So what we've learned through this very quick introduction here is that creating questions is very easy. We can utilize the automatic choices option to help speed up some of the process. We use the right hand side to set the type of question we're going to create. We've also learned that these additional settings allow for a lot of customizability of things that we might want to do with our questions. There's a lot of other very powerful things that Qualtrics can do. Basically anything advanced you can imagine to do in a web survey, Qualtrics can do it. Um, we're not going to worry about that just yet in our introduction. All right, finally, let's uh, find out a way we can sort of export this work uh, so it can be reviewed easily by other people or brought into another document. So what I'm going to do is I want to take what I've created so far and I want to bring it into a Word document. Now one of the ways to do that is to click under Advanced Options. And at the very bottom here, notice Export Survey to Word. I'm going to click that. I'm going to keep all of the options checked and go ahead and hit export and sure enough it created this word document file I'm going to open it up Oops. what we see here is a it's Qualtrics's effort to uh, export our questionnaire so here we see the, the the label of each question this is the intro we define these ones I left the last one is Q3 we see the actual question and then we see the options and we also see some numbers next to these options these numbers are the values that will be coded in our actual code book as we collect data for these questions uh, the reason I'm showing you this export feature is because you'll be utilizing it frequently uh, for any Qualtrics related sort of homework or projects I have you turn into me okay that's it for our bare bones introduction into Qualtrics. Uh, we will be exploring many more advanced topics in class.